OK, hello, everyone. Um, we are back learning about the Industrial Revolution and finding out about what happened during this period of British history in uh, the period from around about 1750 to 1900. And today our focus is all about transport during the Industrial Revolution. Now, transport changed absolutely massively during the period of the Industrial Revolution. And if you study these two pictures, then you can get an idea for how much things had changed. So what I want you to do, just study those two sources and just jot down, write down, how much transport changed during the Industrial Revolution. The, the um, picture on the left hand side is from um, 1750 and the one on the right hand side is from 1900. So you can just pause it and jot down some ideas. OK, well done. And um, so if you have a look at this, you can see that in 1750, most travel was done by things like horse and cart. For example, we had sailboats. The roads were very rough and very bumpy and um, wouldn't have been a particularly comfortable ride. People were on horseback. Goods did move um, on rivers, but all natural river rivers. Um, so that meant, for example, that um, you used to transport lots of goods um, on different rivers, especially heavy goods, for example, etc. Now, this all changed by 1900. So one of the big changes by 1900 is we now have electricity. So we have trams that can be used for public transport. Um, we have tarmac, which is then used to make road surfaces much, much better. So we can see these roads have improved um, and they are much, much more smooth. Now, the other development is that lots of canals were actually constructed and um, waterways were made um, that were not natural waterways like rivers, but goods could be transported by canal. And this opened up trade um, to lots and lots of different places and improved um, lots of um, transport around the country. And then, of course, we've got the development of the train as well, which um, speeds up um, travel time and really, I suppose, in many ways makes the country smaller because people can travel around much, much easier. So there's um, a bigger um, version of that picture for you to have a look at. And again, this is the one in 1900. So what we're going to learn about in the lesson today is we're going to think about the key question. How did transport change during the Industrial Revolution? And we're going to think about um, what changes it led to. And then we're also going to look at what was the impact of the railways as well. So. The first thing let's focus on is the invention of the canals. Now, this is a lock on Regent's Canal. Now, a lock is basically a device um, by which they can actually change the heights of the um, of the boats on the canal and enable, for example, these boats to actually kind of travel um, up um, upstream, if you like, um, or go downstream. So that's one of the really, really um, amazing um, inventions that takes place um, during the time of the Industrial Revolution. Quite often, um, there would be tolls to pay as well at these different locks. Um, but if you've ever been on a canal, you'll have seen some of these locks um, that exist now. It's all quite impressive. So this is Joseph Priestley. Now, he was writing about the Grand Junction Canal, which was built in London in 1805. And he just talks about some of the advantages that the new canal system brought to lots of different places around the country. So he says the advantages which London gains from this grand undertaking are vast. Goods from Manchester, Birmingham and Wolverhampton, cheese, salt, lime, stone, timber, corn, paper and bricks are carried along the canal to London. While in return, groceries, cotton, tin and manure and raw materials from manufacturing districts are carried along it. So we've got lots and lots of new goods that are being made. We've seen that from studying the growth of the factories during the Industrial Revolution and transport is absolutely key for this because it allows all of these goods to be transported around the country at this time. So other examples of canals, we know there's big networks of canals linking lots of different places and you can have a look at some of these um, different places and these different ideas. But the canal system is rather overtaken by the railways. So from the 1850s, when we start to have a really big expansion of the railways, um, we see that the railways become really important. We're going to focus a little bit more on the railways for the rest of this lesson. So when the train was first invented, people were actually quite terrified of it. And I really like this source. It's from Thomas Creevey, who was a member of parliament at that time. And he travelled on that train at just over 36 kilometers an hour which is just a little over 20 miles per hour and this is what he said it's really flying and it is impossible to divest yourself of the notion of instant death to all i'm extremely glad indeed to have seen this miracle and to have traveled in it 
but I am quite satisfied with my first railway journey being my last. So you've got to imagine just how amazing it would have been to go in these new forms of transport like the trains. It must have felt like something really magical and amazing at the time to actually travel in the um, trains um, and people would never have experienced going this fast before and they would have been absolutely amazed by how quickly they could get to different places. This is a really famous painting and if you've ever been to the National Railway Museum it's up in the National Railway Museum in York as well which is a very very good place to go for a day out and this is a painting called The Railway Station by William Powell Frith and this is very typical of a Victorian train station Um, you know if you look at this you could be in York Station for example or Darlington Station and um, this just shows you how busy the trains were, lots of people getting on them, people saying goodbye, people meeting each other, people going off on long journeys. So this changed very much the way that people were living hugely during this time. And we're going to really focus on that by looking at the invention of the train and what impact it had. And that's a really interesting theme in history, because whenever we have things like new technology, it leads to huge changes and changes the way that we live and the way that we um, conduct our lives. So the invention of the railway. Well, the first railway line was very, very local to where we are. It was the Darlington Stockton Railway, which opened in 1825. And this man, George Stevenson, was really important to the invention and creation of the railway system. Um, a very famous early locomotive um, was um, Stevenson's Rocket, which was built in 1829. And you can see that there. But the technology moves on very, very quickly. And we have these big steam engines um, that become a real feature of 19th century um, engineering, really. Um, so huge, huge impact. Now, there's a couple of videos here that you can watch through the PowerPoint, which talks about life before the railways, but also a video about the Liverpool to Manchester railway as well. Um, we also get an opening up of the leisure industry during this time. So one of the big things that we get is the growth of the Victorian seaside resort. So people travel by train and they go to the seaside resort. So if you live in Manchester, for example, you might get the train to Blackpool uh, and that becomes um, a big uh, Victorian seaside resort. If you live in York, for example, you might get the train to Scarborough and go and visit the seaside. And the notion of a, of a bank holiday and what people are doing at the weekends and, and enjoying their leisure time um, owes a lot to the invention of the railways. So you are going to be doing an assignment for me where you're going to answer the question to what extent did the railways improve life in England? You're going to write a few words on that and I'm looking for you to have what is the evidence the railways did improve life in England? What's the evidence they didn't improve life in England? And then what's your overall conclusion? And it's a really good case study in thinking about the influence and significance of technology um, and how that affects our life. So here's some ideas. First thing that the railways led to is that it meant that many workers got jobs um, building the railways. It also allowed people to live further from their work. So um, in the early days of the factories, everyone had to live very, very close to the factory in these cramped houses. But once the um, train gets developed, people can actually live a little bit further away from their work. So we get the, um, the whole idea of a suburb where um, places on the edge of towns become much, much more heavily populated and people can actually travel into work in a way that they'd never done before. We get the growth of seaside resorts. We talked about places like Blackpool, Scarborough. Um, if you live in London for, the, for during this time, you might go down to the south coast and go to somewhere like South End, for example, or Brighton. So we get the development of these seaside resorts and we get things like the fun fair that you can see in that picture there. And people are enjoying all the fun of the fair, if you like. Um, one of the drawbacks of the railways, and this links into the worst jobs in history, um, but many workers died or were injured building the railways. Um, remember the navvies um, and the bridge builders that we learned about in the previous week. Um, we've got new towns that developed. So there were great engineering centres where they built these railways and built the trains and the locomotives. So places like Swindon in the south and Crewe in the north, for example, very important in the development of the railways. Um, there was a financial crisis that was caused by the railways during this time. So that was one of the negative aspects of the railways um, the number of stagecoaches. So if you were in the business of having a horse and a coach and a stagecoach and traveling around the country in that and had a business in that, well, you were going to um, lose out because your business was basically being taken over by people traveling by train. So that was a bad thing for those people, although progress often leads to things like that. And they introduced the penny post system um, because lots of letters could be carried around the country on the trains 
and in fact that still happens today we still have mail trains and um, so a new national postage system developed which meant that people could communicate much easier with people than had been before and farmers were able to use the railway to send fresh food to the big towns and um, so they could sell their products to more places and make more money they could buy more and uh, things like fertilizer in for example and um, get different types of seeds so that improved farming national newspapers could be delivered across britain on the same day so it meant that people didn't just rely on local newspapers like they had done previously so that actually brought the country together a lot more and people felt more of a national identity because of the railways and um, time was also an important thing is that um, it meant that time had to be rationalized and people had to be able to keep the same time because there's no use um, you know 10 o'clock in London being slightly different from 10 o'clock in Lancashire like it kind of used to be and just use the sun to kind of um, dictate what time it was people needed to know exactly what time it was because of the uh, being able to follow the train timetables and um, people in town had a better diet because of the fresh food that could be brought in on trains and the railways made it easier for politicians to visit different areas of the country so this had an impact on democracy as well during this time which I think is really interesting lots of people had their homes demolished this is a very famous picture and we looked at this when we did the city life um, work um, by Gustave Doré and it shows um, many many places um, had um, some homes demolished and houses demolished so that things like big railway stations could be built and the new train lines and um, so that had a huge impact on the cities as well and um, the railway also allowed for the growth of professional sport so we, we start to have in the 19th century things like the football league being created people can go to football matches much easier people can travel around a lot more for things like entertainments and, and things like that so the railway just had a huge huge impact and there's that picture again that we looked at earlier in the lesson earlier on in the lesson by William Powell Fry so that's um, a review of what we've done today you've got your assignment to do so have a look at that but this is the key things we've learned about today in that lesson about the creation of transport during the industrial revolution improved transport thanks very much for listening bye bye